really good place, good way to spend your on the catfish, on the catfish. So the ribs and the catfish. Catfish, looking amazing. Let's get the Mississippi's right there. It's. So like I said in my previous video, I just turned 50. Uh, just had that yesterday. Uh, it was it was fun. You know, my my sister dropped off some stuff. Uh, my friend Kiki from Florida mailed me some things. It arrived just in time. Uh, my brother dropped off some beer and booze. My dad dropped me off a hot glue gun. Um, so it was a good day. It was a good day. I had some chicken wings and uh, beer and uh, yeah, played with the baby. It was cool. Um, don't know that it feels any different. It doesn't feel any different. Don't expect that, uh, and don't look back. Like why? Why look back on a on your life like it's a giant sack of of things to to dwell on? You know, you can only do. You know, you're here today. Do today. Do tomorrow. Do next week. You know, and uh, I guess tens of milestone. Twenty, thirty, forty. Uh, for my fortieth. I didn't really want to put up with it, so I ran away. I went to Memphis to see Graceland. Graceland was always one of those things in my mind that was kind of like Oz, you know. It didn't really exist. It was just an imaginary place, you know. And I got down there to Memphis, and you know, as soon as you hit Memphis, the vibe really, you know, it kind of blows you away a little bit. It's it's very chill, but exciting. Uh, a lot of music going on. Uh, my friend Terry took me out, and we we had some wings, and we not wings, we had ribs. Of course, we had ribs. We had ribs at Rendezvous Ribs, which were just absolutely spectacular. If you're ever in Memphis, you gotta. I mean, if you don't try the dry rub ribs, you're a preposterous person, really. So anyway, I did that, and I did. That. I signed up for a little tour, only like forty or fifty bucks, and they they take you to Graceland, and then they take you to to Sun Studio. And, and what an amazing, I don't want to say opportunity, what an amazing experience, doesn't even sound right, but just to see Graceland, you know, just to see the house where Elvis Presley lived, and it was, by today's standards, it was modest, you know, it was only so many bedrooms and a fairly small pool. By today's standards, if if you had that pool in your house, if you put in a pool and you had your friends over to look at it, they'd all say, "What? Why did you get that tiny little waiting pool? What's wrong with you?" Uh, it was good. I uh, videotaped inside. I know you're not supposed to, but I, I did take some footage. Uh, had to do it, and uh, they give you a little kind of audio tour where you walk through and they're telling stories about Elvis and the rooms you're in, the different rooms and uh, what he did there and what they were called, like the jungle room and things like that. And when that's at the very end, you're kind of in this squash court where uh, they've got his jumpsuits around the walls and, you know, a couple of his gold records and things like that. And it's his daughter and... Uh, it's the end of the tour, and you realize that no, this is the end of the tour. This is this is where he, they're going to talk about him passing away. And to hear a grown woman speak of her experience um, as a little girl when her dad passed away, I think she says something like, "My dad, Elvis Presley, my my dad is dead." I ripped the headphones off. I couldn't even take anymore. I just couldn't. I couldn't deal with that. I couldn't deal with the loss that a little girl might have felt. And anyway, um, so that was the end of my audio tour right there. But you walk out of the squash court. Right outside the squash court is, uh, you know, the gravestones. Uh, the, well, the graves of the of the Presley family. You know, and there it is Elvis Aaron Presley. And. Uh, I think sublime is the word. Sublime. It was sublime. I mean, it wasn't overpowering, but it was beautiful and, and, and sublime. So if you get a chance, don't ever think Graceland is cheesy or something like that. Don't ever think. I don't want to do the tourist thing because Graceland, but do it. Do it. 
And you get on a little bus and you go to Sun Studio. And uh, they're a lot stricter there. They keep an eye on you. They don't want you videotaping anywhere outside the gift room. Um, <laughs> got nailed in there pretty quick. And they take you through, take you down to the recording area where Johnny Cash and Elvis and, you know, How and Wolf and, and uh, Jerry Lee Lewis kind of work their magic in the recording room. And it's just like you see in the photos, it's, it's kind of like this white board with the pegboard just like spray painted not spray painted but painted white pegboard everywhere the tour guide says to me that's weird because I'm a musician I do play guitar on the side I've been in recording studios anyway but he looks around the room and he goes and you sir you over there where you're standing and I'd pick the most comfortable spot in the room for myself he says right where you're standing is where Elvis stood and he recorded that's all right mama and holy hell, to know that's where uh, that's all right, Mama. In my mind, is possibly the most perfectly recorded rock and roll song in history. All right, I'll say that lightly. Uh, it's not my favorite song, but I do think it's the most perfect rock and roll song ever recorded. So Sun Studio, that was that. That was good, and uh, a hell of a place, you know. I, Went out drinking that night, and these, these young people took me in. <laughs> I was 40. I just turned 40. I think it was my birthday, or the day after my birthday. These, these, this young couple and their friend kind of latched onto me in a bar, and they said, ah, "You got, we got to go to this place after 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 hours. We're going for cheeseburgers, you know. They're the shittiest looking cheeseburgers, but they're delicious. So they took us. So we got in a cab. We didn't get in a cab. We got in a bloody... I had like a, a horse and carriage with these lights on it. So it's like a, a something you would see that Snow White took to a ball or something like that. Cinderella. It's like a Cinderella bloody horse and carriage with Christmas lights on it and stuff. Get in that. And we go to like this part of town. And it looks it's a little run down at the hills. You know, it's not, not fancy. And um, it's, it's called Ernstein's and... Hazel Sundry Store, I believe. Ernst Ernestine's and Hazel's. Anyway, so we go in there. Uh, it's a little pool hall. It looks nice enough on the inside. Not quite as bad as upside. And they're like, no, no, we go upstairs. So we go upstairs. There's no lights. There's no lights on upstairs. It's just pure darkness. And they're like, this place used to be a brothel. <laughs> and they're just scribbling on the walls and some holes punched here and there, and like a bathtub for no reason in one of the rooms just all plaster and stuff it's weird go to the end of the hall and go in this and there's a little bar with with a light on it like a little lamp with a beat up lampshade and stuff and there's a there's a dude sitting behind the counter his name is Nate and everybody knows this guy Nate they're like hey Nate hey Nate says hi to everybody he knows everybody so we sit down there and order a couple of probably Budweiser's or something like that and uh, we each order a cheeseburger, and the cheeseburgers come, and they just look, it looks like a McDonald's cheeseburger almost. It's not, nothing to write home about. Bloody delicious. It was like they were right. It was one of the best hamburgers I've ever had in my life. And apparently, uh, I, I don't know how true this is, but during some depression or recession, this uh, Ernstine's and Hazel started cleaning their grills with dill pickle juice because it vinegar in it and clean the grills and they still do that and the, the cleaning the grills with dill pickle juice gives the, the burgers a very very nice tangy taste um, so that that was that I mean god I can't remember and as, as the the middle of the night wore on and on there's just more and more young kids kept coming in this dark room at the back of this upstairs of this pool hall it was the strangest experience of my life, but one of the strangest, it okay, was well, not even close to the strangest experience of my life, but I recommend it. If it's still open in Memphis, you'd have to look it up. I doubt if Nate is still there. If he is, good for him, because he was getting a little on in years when I was there. Um, something, to, something to check out. Um, so that's my little uh, Memphis 40th birthday story. My 50th. Wow. Uh...
uh, not so so eventful. We're we're in this COVID lockdown crazy, and uh, I hope it's done soon. I don't know if it will be, but it's not my call. <laughs> it's not my call. My call is to like put up with this or run away, and uh, <laughs> so jury's out on that. The jury's out on that. One more quick story about Memphis was, uh, you know, one night I, I heard this beautiful chimey uh, guitar coming through the air and, uh, you know, sometimes fenders can make this sound and the only way I can describe it is chimey. It's got a nice warm, like a harpy sound to it. So I kind of like walked all over trying to figure it out because there's a lot of music coming from a lot of different places. I finally tracked the guy who was sitting down, sitting on a sidewalk on a little stool with uh, two other guys, one on bass and one on guitar. And I, and I must have listened to this guy set twice. Uh, he was that good. Uh, and his name was Jake Lear. It is Jake Lear. He's probably still playing in Memphis. Uh, it looks like he does some blues festival circuits, but uh, anyway, the name of the song I really liked was Muddy Water. I mean, he had me at that. Uh, and if, if you get a chance, if you're into that kind of kind of music, the, they call it just I guess the electric blues uh, kind of thing. Look up Jake Lear. I think you'll like it. So I guess that's the end of my Memphis stories uh, for now. You know, I'll probably throw some more here and there if I remember them. I was only there once. It's worth a visit again. But uh, you can do it. You know, if you're run, if you're like turning forty or thirty and got nothing else to do, run away there for your birthday. You see the Peabody ducks. It's these ducks. They put the, these ducks that go. Uh, every morning they march these ducks off the hotel roof, down the elevator, and out into the pond in the middle of the hotel. And then every afternoon they round the ducks up and march them right back to the elevator and up to the, the hotel roof. And they put them in a cage, I guess. And uh, it's called the March of the Ducks or something like that. It's worth seeing. It sounds dumb. But man, there's a big crowd and you got to fight your way to see the Peabody ducks. And uh, it's worth it. Why not? Oh, it, in, in the same place, it has like Elvis's tailor, and you can go in there and get a piece of clothes. I went in, and I'm like, uh, this shirt looks cool. How much is this shirt? And I think it was like, uh, 200 bucks. I'm like, don't, holy crap, 200 bucks. Okay, you're only there once, you know, might as well take it. It's Elvis's tailor, after all. So I try it on, it doesn't quite fit, and I go, oh. I'll take this other one instead. And she's like, great. We get up to the cash register. She says, that'll be 260 bucks. I'm like, 260 bucks? What's going on? She says, oh, this one's more than the other one. This one's a fancier shirt. Oh, no. You know, and I, I'm not the kind of guy to give to peer pressure. But you're only in Memphis once. You might as well buy the goddamn shirt from Elvis's tailor. You got it. You can go take it to a rockabilly festival or... I don't know if you got a friend with antique cars, you can put it on and go driving around. If you go to a Stray Cats reunion show, you can wear it. Um, or if you just want to be cooler than your co-workers at a shindig, why not? Uh, so, that's... Anyway, back to the point. Run away to Memphis. Why not? If you're having a hard time, run away to Memphis. It's a lot to do. You'll meet some people, you know. If you're a guy, there's some good-looking women. If you're, if, you're a, if you're a girl, there's probably some good looking guys I don't know I didn't really check them out yeah, they seemed all right they seem like normal dudes um, lots of music if you're a music person this is a cool place to go uh, that's that um, that's my Memphis story so I will finish this one up and I'll see you in the next show I guess